I'd like to hear from Dr. Russell first. Are you both prepared to? No, I'm so sorry, I could not hear you. I would like to hear from Dr. Russell first. Is that her name? Dr. Russell, Dr. Russell yes. The order would be, I would propose based on scheduling Dr. Russell, Dr. Wolf, Dr. Rachel. Okay, then that's good, because that's the order I prefer, so. Perfect. All right. All right, let's bring her in, please. Your Honor, before we get started, can I get a, an understanding? You started to say it at, uh, at sidebar the other day, and you said you wanted to put that off to, to get to the witnesses. But I need a, a little bit of an understanding of what the court's expectations are. Uh, my understanding of Wadir, which this seems to be unusual in terms of the timing of it. So it, the understanding of the Wadir is this is for the Commonwealth's motion to exclude this testimony. All right, that's what we're here for, the Rule 14 violation. Is that the same with Dr. Wolf and Dr. Rachel? Well, I thought that would help both of you. Uh, the Commonwealth has nothing on that, and you say you haven't been able to even talk to them at all about this case. That's so I want to find out if they have any credible, competent evidence to put forward. So we'll have a voir dire on those. But so for Dr. Russell, what we're doing here today is there's um, an alleged violation. Well, let's just, there appears to me to be a violation of the reciprocal discovery obligations of defense counsel regarding Dr. Russell. So let's hear from her today to see what the appropriate remedy is for this violation. So my intention is to ask her the, so I have, the court understands my sort of guardrails, my intention is to ask her what her qualifications are, which is the, the that's the basis for one year. And that's where I'm going to stop. I, I'm not intending to ask her what her opinions are, conclusions. I'm going to ask her if she's come to opinions and conclusions, but I don't want to have to examine her concerning her, her full opinions, her full conclusions, what she's, uh, what she's based those conclusions on. Okay. It's unfair. We've provided the defense everything that we, I'm sorry, the prosecution, everything that we need to provide to them in terms of disclosure. They've got the equivalent of a report. They've got a summary of what she's going to testify. When was that provided? My order was one week from the start of trial, right? Well, we didn't, Your Honor, in, in fairness, they didn't even finish their discovery one week before the start of trial. So it's a little unfair for us to be put on a stage. One week from the filing of the certificate of compliance. Well, there, I don't know when there's, I can't remember. Other, that my co-counsel indicates it was the day before trial. Okay. So during the course of, the trial's a dynamic thing. During the course of the trial, I did not know who Dr. Marie Russell was at the time that they filed their certificate of compliance. We then attempted to, and did, give them the reciprocal discovery that we were obligated to do after they filed their certificate of compliance. When? Within three days of that. We had been giving them information prior to that, but at least within three days of that. Uh, we've continued, so the record's clear, we've continued to get additional discovery from the Commonwealth and notices of discovery throughout the trial. They, they have not finished. In fact, during the trial, they interviewed Jen McCabe, apparently, had a full interview with her. Uh, Lieutenant Tully took a report, dated the report, and then they held on to that report until after she testified. The interview, the report, and the completion of the report were all done before her testimony. Do you, need, do you need to call her again? You know, I'm not, that's not my, and I think the court understands, that's not my point. My point is not, I need to call Jennifer McCabe back. I've done the damage that needs to be done on Jennifer McCabe. <laughs> The point is, I'm sorry, I missed that. You've what? I've done the damage that needed to be done on Jennifer McCabe. I don't need to call her back. The point is... All right, so I disagree. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to hear from the Commonwealth on this. So, Ms. McLaughlin or Mr. Lally? Your Honor, um, just briefly in regard to... What counsel was referencing with Ms. McCabe, it was not a full interview by Lieutenant Tully. Uh, it was a, and I can give, I don't have it on me at this moment, but I can give the, the court a copy of that report. But essentially it was Ms. McCabe met with Lieutenant Tully, looked at some video, um, and was asked a single question. Um, that report wasn't available. Uh, I didn't have it until after Ms. McCabe testified, but it was given to counsel prior to Lieutenant Tully testifying, and there were no questions asked of Lieutenant Tully in regard to that. The... My issue, and, and you know, I, I wasn't asking for a voir dire as it proposed to, uh, as it relates to Dr. Russell, is that we first heard of Dr. Russell on May 21st, uh, which was, I think, six weeks into trial. Uh, right, so that, that's what I asked, and you told me it was three days after the beginning of trial, Mr. Jackson. No, I said I used to John O'Keefe's arm. I didn't have one conversation with her. Then immediately, within three days of that, uh, turned that information over to the, to the prosecution. So I didn't say that I, I gave this over three days into trial. That's not what I said. All right, but you were ordered to do it, Ms. Tianetti. What was the date? What, you had one week from when? Uh, the day before the trial. So it would have been, I believe, April 15th. So what, what we knew as of that day, we were required to turn over. I, I need to take a quick listen. What? All right. All right, so the Commonwealth has moved that I exclude the testimony of Dr. Russell based on a violation of the reciprocal discovery obligations of the defense. So I do find that there is a violation of the reciprocal discovery obligations of Rule 14. And I'm quoting from the notes, the importance of this, the reporter's notes to the old rule. And as you all know, we're in the process of updating that rule. But the very integrity of the judicial system and public confidence in the system depend on full disclosure of all the facts within the framework of the rules of evidence. To ensure that justice <laughs> is done, 